Hi, I'm Joby and welcome to Nodes Heaven Electronics. This is my first installment of the series that I'm doing called Understanding Electronics, where I'll be going over the basics of electronics, from understanding components to where to get them. All right. Today, we're gonna to be talking about passives. These are the most common and the most basic components. All right, the first passive component that we're gonna be talking about is resistors. Now these in electronics are probably the most common component ever really. Um, you're gonna see them the most most likely depending on the circuit but they come in many different forms as you can see. These are your standard quarter watt resistors. This is a five watt resistor and now let's get into potentiometers. Potentiometers or variable, variable resistors are just like resistors but by turning the control knob you can vary the resistor. As you can see they come in many many different forms and these are just a few. Really whatever your size need a size can be found. And last but not least for resistors, we have resistor networks. This one is an eight resistor network. Basically, there's eight resistors and one of each of those resistors are all connected together and are on this pin. This is good if you'd like to drive lots of LEDs and only use one component as opposed to eight individual resistors. Now to de determine the value of resistors, of course you could use a multimeter, take your resistors, turn on your meter, and just simply probe your resistor, like so. And as you can see, this is reading 32.5. These are 5% resistors, so the reading will be off. I know that these resistors are actually 33K. It is reading 32.5K. To determine the resistance value of a t potentiometer, most of the time you can just look on the back. On the back of this one, you can see that it says 25 ohms. Let's test this, I'll put my meter into the ohms range and you're going to put one probe on the outermost terminals showing approximately 25 ohms. Now if you'd like to see the varying resistance if I turn this knob nothing happens. That's because I'm on the two outermost uh, on the two outermost pins Basically what's in here is a resistor in a circle connecting to these outer two pins. This center pin is connected to this knob which is wiping across that resistor and depending on where it is on the resistor, the resistance changes. For example, if I hook my multimeter up to any the middle and any one of the side pins and I turn the knob you can see the value change say so let me dial it into 15 it's a little bit touchy but now we're in the area 15 ohms. I've just played with it a little more and as you can now see I've got it in directly at 15 ohms. Alright the final part for resistors is determining the value. On resistors, most resistors at least, there's going to be four bands and there's going to be three bands with a color and then there is going to be one band that's either silver or gold. Most are gold. 
All right, determining the resistor value is very simple. All you need to do is look at your resistor. Mine, the color code is orange, 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 gold. So what you're going to do is you're going to, for your two colors, write down the number that they represent. So in my case, 3, 3. And then for the last one, you're going to imagine okay, one, ten, one and, one and you're going to multiply it by, in this case, 1,000 because it's orange. So that will get you 3,300, which 3,300 ohms, which is actually 33 K. And the gold band means that it has 5% accuracy. So we can test the resistance by taking our multimeter here. And we're going to switch it to something above 33. My multimeter will go to 200 K. We're going to take our test probes and these. To get 32.5, which is within the 5% accuracy tolerance of these resistors. Now we have capacitors. Think of them like batteries. When there is power coming into them, they're charging up. And when the power is lower than what they're charged up to, they will discharge and add power to power that's lower. So you, these are useful for smoothing an alternating current signal. For example here, I've got a rough waveform with no capacitor on. You can see that it's all over the place and it's really not smooth. If I draw a simpler waveform, but draw it as if there's a capacitor involved. You can see that its falls are much less drastic because the capacitor is discharging its energy and making it much smoother. If you had an even higher value capacitor, <coughs> the waveform would look something like this exactly smooth. There might be a little bit of noise in there, but if you put a voltage regulator on, you'd get perfect regulated DC. Now this is just one application of capacitors. They're very useful in circuits and can be used for coupling, smoothing, and in other filters such as RC filters. I'm not going to go into determining their value in this video because it's rather complicated. If you'd like to find out how, I recommend that you go onto Google and search capacitor code calculator. But on some capacitors, such as electrolytic, the value is printed right on this one. As you can see, 10 volts. 10 microfarads at 16 volts. Alright, thanks for watching. This has been a Nodes Have In video, Understanding Electronics, Episode 1, Passive Components. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.